To be with you here today, I want to jump right in. We're going to look at another letter from Paul to the Roman church, and this is probably a verse that you're really intimately familiar with. It's from chapter 8, verse 26. I'm going to read from the New Century Version. Let the words wash over you in this moment. Also, the Spirit helps us with our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit speaks to God for us, even begs God for us, with deep feelings that words cannot explain. I've always thought that it's important to think about process. It's about the process. It's not a check in the box. It's the action of the process that changes us. And prayer, it is a much needed item in the life toolbox that we have for sure. And one I don't think that we pull out enough times. But we get stuck on the how, don't we? The process, if you will. But it doesn't have to be hard. I've spent more years than I can count creating prayer encounters that are multi-sensory for people to engage in this deep spiritual work, to get those feelings up into the sphere of the spirit so to speak. We all have situations that haven't been resolved. We have people we need to forgive. Heck, we probably need to forgive ourselves along the way. We have a something or other that just didn't go our way. In the old city of Jerusalem, a place of prayer and pilgrimage sacred to the Jewish people is the prayer wall. It's, it's the only remains of the retaining wall that's surrounding the Temple Mount, the site of the first and the second temples of Jerusalem. And it's held to be uniquely holy by our ancient Jewish brothers and sisters. The first temple, you might remember, was destroyed by the Babylonians in 587, 586 BCE, a long time ago. And the second temple was destroyed by the Romans in 70. In 70. You might know it as the Western Wall or maybe even the Wailing Wall. And rabbinic belief holds that the, that the divine presence of God never departs from the Western Wall. And so you find people, especially our Jewish brothers and sisters, lamenting the destruction of the temple and they pray for its restoration. And so it has long been accustomed to push these little slips of paper with wishes or prayers on them in the cracks of the walls. I'm wondering if you and I need a Wailing Wall today. Maybe uh, you need to get your feelings out. You're having a hard time. Maybe the sighs of your soul are too deep for words. The, the spirit, though, Paul writes to us, to the Roman church, stands ready for you and all you have to give. You just have to do it. You just have to be about the process, the action of it. You could keep a stack of post-it notes and put a word, a name, or a squiggle and during the day flip through them and just say, Lord, in your mercy after each one. You could use an Expo marker like this and put um, on your mirror in, uh, in, in your bathroom when you get ready and keep track of all the joys and concerns. And every time you pause, just stare at your gorgeous mug, I might add. Ask the spirit to hold those names and those situations close. You see the point of today's devotion, right? It's the doing. It is the releasing them out of you back to God. It's the process. It doesn't have to look like mine. It doesn't have to look like Pastor Susan's or TV preacher Joel. What's his name? It just has to be yours. Only yours. And the Spirit. The Spirit will help you. And God's. God stands ready. God stands ready for all that you have to bring. So today I'm inviting you to pray differently. Pray earnestly. Pray honestly. Have a wonderful day, church.